we're going to have you submit your payment requests in a little bit different manner. Um, we're going to go through our website. Um, we find it to be um, easier in, in most instances. Um, and uh, it provides you guys an electronic copy of the submission. And it's also a way for us to get an electronic copy of the submission. Um, so the on the right-hand side of the screen here is just a brief little um, direction on how to get to the forms. You're going to go up to the upper left-hand corner and click on this menu button. And you're going to go down to My State. And you're going to click on Utah. Uh, the Utah page is, is a little busy. Um, one, of the, one of the things I want to point out is there is a New Choices button and there is an Aging Waivers button. Um, that is for uh, different services. So if, if you click on those, you'll end up with a bunch of payroll forms and, and employer-employee packets. Um, so what you're going to want to do is go down to Financial Transaction Services. And it's going to bring you to the base page. Um, we have the Aging Waiver Request and then the New Choices Waiver Request for Payment. Um, both of these forms are extremely similar. Um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to go through both forms. Um, I can certainly show you know the other form at the end, but uh, we're going to just go through the aging waiver form, and then I'll, I will bring up the new choices form so you can see that it is extremely similar. Um, all fields marked with a red asterisk is a required field. You won't be able to submit the the form unless there's information in there. Um, you will receive. Well, I should say, um, if you have a question about what should be entered in a particular field, uh, we do have a, a waiver specific guide for each form. And those are also attached to the meeting invite, and they will be available uh, to you guys afterwards too. Um, you will receive a confirmation email copy of the of the submission. Um, there's a, a spot on the form where you enter an email and you confirm it. Uh, you won't be able to go forward unless the emails match, and the reason for that is that is the email address that gets a copy of the form that is submitted, along with attachments and everything. So it's a it's a good record keeping uh, a tool that we that we like to promote that you know you get the exact same thing we do and it's a nice easy way for you to keep all of your receipts and invoices and, and information related to the order all in one place uh, and then we have a dedicated inbox uh, if there's any questions um, you can you can shoot us an email um, you'll see this quite often throughout the throughout the guides but it's ms-ut expenses at morningsunfs.com uh, morningsunfs.com, I should have mentioned, is our website. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look at the form. So here's the guide uh, for the aging waiver. And we're going to click on the aging waiver form. Now, when we designed these, these website forms, we tried to make it as similar to your existing forms as possible. Um, most of the information on those existing forms is very usable and, and applicable. So um, we try to, I understand it's not going to be in the same one page format, but it should be all the same data points and very similar um, information that is needed. So once again, I don't know if you can see this, there's a little red asterisk uh, next to these fields. Those are required again. Um, so you'll go through and you'll enter the information on the form. Um, Here's the email confirmation. Again, that needs to that needs to match in order to move on. Um, all of these forms are dynamic, so if the if the below service or item hasn't been approved in the care plan, you select no, then that field goes away and you can't enter a date and then you can't submit the form. Um, one of the things that we wanted to point out specifically. Um, so if you just go through and view, I know not everybody uses the aging form, but um, uh, this field is on both forms. So one of the one of the things, and and most of you are are used to um, either filling out a form for reimbursement or for direct payment, where we would send a payment directly to a vendor uh, or an individual. Uh, one of the things that we like to highlight is online order, and what that is is is. Morning Sun, if, if you send us the appropriate documentation, links, you know, all the stuff around an online order, um, who we're selling it to, the mailing address, everything, um, we'll make that order on your behalf. Um, it's it's billed in the same way that a, that a check payment would be um, processed, so there is a little bit of lay time. 
um, but we are happy to place online orders for you. Um, obviously, some of the benefits is you don't have to put the money up front, um, and then we can we can go ahead and we'll uh, we'll keep all the documentation as far as like the order summary, um, shipping details, and all that stuff in our system, along with this payment request form. And uh, we can refer back to that, or if you need any information on that, we can certainly um, share that with you. Um, so that's one of the things that we'd like to point out um, is the online ordering function. I know I know a lot of you may have questions about that, and I'll be happy to talk more about that at the end. Um, but that's just one of the things I wanted to highlight on the form. Uh, make make check payable too. It's kind of a dual function field. Um, if it's a reimbursement or direct payment, that's fairly obvious that you put the vendor or the, the association that's getting paid. Um, if it's a if it's an online order, we'd like you to enter the website. Um, and we'll go through it in the guide, but if it's from Amazon, you don't have to put the link to the actual item in here. You would just put amazon.com, just so we know uh, that we'd look for links and stuff later. Uh, here's a spot that you can upload a vendor W9. Um, you can either drag and drop right here, or you can click on it and it'll bring up the window where you can select the file. Um, you can select multiple files. Um, it's, a, it's a great little way to keep that, that document in there. Uh, vendor mailing address, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and here's where it gets a little bit different from um, the PDF or paper versions of the form. Uh, again, both forms have these dynamic fields. So if you don't have, or if this expense isn't related to one of these sections, you don't have to fill anything out. Um, but if you do, you'll, you'll simply click yes. And then all of the um, information needed for that is, is within this section. Um, they are required once you select yes. So you'll have to do in the service start date, the units, the services slash item cost, and then this service total cost automatically calculates. Um, let me show you real quick here. Um, 1225 automatically goes to 49. Um, don't worry that there's no zeros at the bottom. Um, if there is change, it does keep those on there. But if it's just a straight flat dollar amount, um, we leave that off there. Um, so you'll just verify that that amount is correct. Uh, before moving on and that's what happens when a required field is not filled out um, it'll let you know pretty pretty brightly that, that you need to enter the information in there um, description um, very similar to the previous form uh, we will scroll down here uh, so description describe the items or service provided um, and then the file upload if this is a reimbursement we're looking for the receipts um, as backup for the reimbursement if it's a direct payment, um, an invoice, or, or some sort of um, information to pay the vendor. And then for online orders, this is where you're gonna put your um, links document. And again, we'll talk about that when we talk about online orders at the end here. Um, but this is where you'll drag and drop or click and, and add any files related to, again, this chore service section. If you don't have anything, you can skip on by. Each section is exactly the same except for the service at the top. So uh, they all have service units, cost, total cost, description, file, upload. Um, each, each one of these forms is for an individual participant and, and to an individual vendor. Um, the same with websites. If, if there's multiple websites, you're gonna have to fill out a separate form um, just so we can keep everything separate and make sure that we're tracking everything properly. Um, so as you can see, they're all they're all the same. And then this check total amount or total check amount, sorry, um, this automatically calculates from the sections above. Um, you'll just want to confirm that that's correct. And then the bottom here, um, this is similar to the to the paper form. You'll put your first and last name. Uh, the signature field is just drawn with your mouse. Um, don't worry, we will not look too closely or not, I'm not saying not to look too closely, but um, don't worry if it doesn't match your signature exactly. Um, and then the coordinator or the date that you signed it. So it automatically defaults to today's date. Um, and then you click submit. Now I'm just gonna click submit because I didn't fill the whole form out and it shows you everything that is required. Um, so if you, if you didn't fill something out, it'll let you know in brightly colored. If you have multiple errors, you can click see errors and it'll take you step by step through the air so you can make sure that everything is filled out correctly um, again this guide on the right hand side um, just details what 
is expected in each field. Um, if you ever have any questions, let me go to the bottom here. If you ever have any questions, um, you just let us know. Uh, send us an email at ms-utexpenses at morningsunfs.com. Or you can give us a call at our 1-800 number that's answered here in our, our Golden Valley office, 877-450-5041. Um, and then you'll select option five for financial transaction services. And at the start, um, I will be the one answering the phone calls. Um, we'd like to um, kind of start with a with a manager level position, um, doing the intake and seeing what issues are coming up and making sure that, you know, I'm answering your, your questions appropriately and all those things. Um, after, after a period of time when things have, have kind of solidified, then I'll pass it off to my, my team, uh, a supervisor, and then you'll have a dedicated uh, specialist that is only working or that works just on your, your, uh, your forms and your, and your programs. So, um, There'll be the person that'll be uh, monitoring this this email address uh, when the time comes for transition. Also, uh, when we do transition, I will send an email out uh, to make sure that everybody knows. Um, you know, I'm I'm no longer directly involved, um, but I will always be here uh, for questions and answers and, and anything that is needed uh, to support you guys. Uh, once you click submit. Uh, the field on or the, the window on the left, this is the email that the person filling out the form uh, receives. So I entered my email address in that email confirmation field, and this is this is the form that I got back. So it has all the information on the form um, that's filled out, um, and then these sections. Um, like I said previously, this one's for chore section. Uh, it's got the units, the cost, the total, um, the description, and then one of the most important parts is it has the receipt that you attach to it. So if you click on that, it'll bring up a copy of that receipt. Um, and that's also the same thing that we received. Just take a second here. And there, there's the receipt that was attached to the, to the repayment request. Um, and then you can attach multiple documents there. And, and we think it's a nice way to, to kind of keep track of everything. Um, this one has a, a, a community living uh, services uh, item as well. So then there's a living room furniture, couch, chair, and tables, et cetera. And then the receipt there. The total, um, the name of the coordinator, their signature, and then the date that they signed it. Um, it should always be the form, the date the form was submitted, just because that's usually what it is. If it's not, then we may question it, um, just because that seems a little odd. Um, on the right-hand screen, this is what we get. Um, so we just get pretty much the exact same thing. Um, it just lets us know all of the all of the fields that you filled out, all of the information that that you entered, and we need uh, for record keeping and, and and making sure that we're um, issuing the payments correctly. Now, so everyone's, well, not everyone's, but online orders. So if you're filling out the form and you'd like Morning Sun to place the order for it on your behalf, um, you're going to select online order on the form uh, right here. And then in the, again, in the, in the vendor check payment field, you're going to enter the website, um, just a general, you know, amazon.com, walmart.com. Uh, whatever the, the general website information is. Um, in the direction field on the form, please provide as much detail as possible. If the item has an option or options, such as size, color, count, flavor, et cetera, please list those in the description field. Um, we get a link to, well, here, let's talk about that. So in the file upload, um, we're gonna ask that you upload a Word document or a similar document that has the link or links to the items that you copy and pasted from the, the browser address window. So you'll go on to, let's just use Amazon, for example. You'll go into Amazon, you'll find the exact item, you'll click on it, um, 
even if you do select like the, the flavor, the color, the size, et cetera, that doesn't come through when you send us the link. That only happens when you um, actually enter that information or enter that item into your cart. Um, so you'll send us a link and here's what, here's an example. So this is a link to an insurer uh, meal replacement. So you'll, you'll put that on the, the Word document and then you'll have the count, flavor, et cetera, in the description field. Um, one of the things that we ask is, is do not put items into a shopping cart and send us a link to the shopping cart because that doesn't always work. And also, uh, we will never log into your account. Um, so don't provide us with login access. If you have an Amazon account or an account with any website, uh, please don't send us that information because um, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be logging into your account and uh, that uh, gets a little messy that way. So um, on that document, if you on that file upload, you can put as many links as you want as long as it's to the same website and then uh, we'll place the order uh, on your behalf um, you know with the with the information also in the description you can put the, the ship to address, etc. And one thing we want you to keep in mind is that prices, availability, and shipping charges are always subject to change. Um, for those of you that are, are regular Amazon shoppers, the price goes up and down depending on, um, sometimes depending on where you are in, in the, in the <laughs> geographically. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that. So um, just try and keep that in mind. And we'll always try to do our best to, to, uh, get that rectified if there is an issue um, based off the original order. Uh, we will reach out to the submitting coordinator to resolve issues related to an online order. Um, and like I said previously, we'll, we'll maintain the order details, shipment notifications, and any other documents, emails, et cetera, related to the order. Um, we have an electronic uh, filing document filing system. Um, so each, each of these payment request forms is what, what's called technically an invoice document, and then we can attach any emails or documents to that um, and then that's a nice way for us to update comments in case there's a there's an issue or it's just a good way for us to to make sure that we're getting these things completed um, and, and ordered and checks getting out the door and all that stuff and if you have questions about or issues with an order please contact us at the uh, at the email or the or the 1-800 number um, so yeah, so those are the those are the things I wanted to talk about with the forms. Um, let me just pull up so you can see what the the new choices waiver form <laughs> looks like. Let's just pull that up real quick. Um, it just says new choices up here. That's the only header difference. The other one said agent waiver, um, but similar information uh, required here. Again, the email approvals, uh, the client enrollment, re-enrollment information uh, from the previous form, request, request type, et cetera. So um, like I said, we tried to make it as, as straightforward as possible uh, off your previous form uh, because we know that it's kind of difficult when you, when you change forms and, and there's a lot of information that goes into these. So we, we wanted to make it as, as straightforward as possible. And uh, if there's any changes, um, to the to the form that need to be done. Uh, the nice thing about these forms is uh, I'm the one that will make those changes, so uh, we could turn those changes around pretty quick if it's a if it's a global change that needs to be done. Um, Linda or Laney can can you know send those to me and we can we can get those updated quickly. Um, so off that I'm going to stop sharing so I can pull up. The questions. Um, so the first question after is it being recorded? Um, Tammy asks, can you do a batch upload? So my question to Tammy is, is what does that specifically? Uh, so, <clears throat> so the way it works right now is I have the invoices and there's a paper form that is very similar to what you showed us that we've been using with acumen mm -hmm. and i do that paper form 
and an invoice for every one of the services we do. And then I just upload those all at once. It takes me like five minutes tops to sure. get all of my requests done. So if I were to do this one by one, I would probably be doing it all day long. Whereas right now it takes me five minutes. So that's why I was asking if there's a batch upload. And Brian, so, Tammy Gallegos is from San Juan County. Um, okay. She's the, the case I'm that the we talked about file. previously. No? <laughs> sure, sure. So you have, yeah, you have the, the difficult submissions. Um, there's no option right now to do a batch upload. It's kind of a individual form basis. Um, but I think that's something we can certainly talk about, uh, Linda, um, of adding in the in the future if that's if that's something that that is needed. Um, like I said, our whole so, our whole. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So just looking at what you did, um, you have to have a W nine. Uh, you don't so have, have to, to up, upload a invoice and a W nine for every one of my clients, for every one of the forms I do every month. So the W-9 field should not be a required field. If you do have a W-9, um, go ahead and attach it. Uh, what our team will do is if, if we get a request that we don't have that vendor, um, we will reach out directly to the vendor uh, to get a W-9. Uh, we find that that's easier, um, communicating directly with the vendor. If you know there's, there's kind of a language barrier between a business and, and the work that you guys do and then the work that we do. So we're happy to uh, connect with the vendor and, and get that W-9 uh, directly from them. So if all of the other AAAs are doing pass-through and they're collecting this money as well, do you need a W-9 just once from each AAA or do you need it on every invoice they turn in? Oh, we'll just need it once. Um, and then we'll com we'll communicate and I'll, I, I think I'll work with, with Linda and, and Lainey and then we'll just get the list of or the W nine just up front. So if it's a if it's a reimbursement back to the AAA, then you guys can just totally ignore that W nine information. Okay. Um, next question, Haley. Oh, it's more of a comment. I appreciate that. Um, Then Tracy had a question. So the designated person from our agencies would enter, not all staff. Um, I think that's that's a that's an individual AAA um, um, question. We were just grabbing the field names from the forms previously. If there's, just so you know, the person that's that's emails listed and that signs the form is going to be the one that is is contacted if, there, if there's any issues or anything. Um, but yeah, I think that's more of an internal process for, for your agency. Ryan, if I may, on that question, this is Lainey. Um, with the previous vendor, it was their preference that each agency have one, have a point of contact and a backup contact for FTS request submissions. Okay. So I think that's where this question is originating from because previously it was not our business process, but the request of the vendor. Sure, um, sure. So if that's something that you'd like to talk to Linda and I about offline, or if you know right now that um, it doesn't matter and you, you'd be able to accept this from anybody, um, that's fine too, uh, just to give you some context into that question. Sure, yeah. sure, no, that, that makes sense. Um, we are, we're not going to require that you have a, a one person that fills out the form. Um, what we may have and, and we like to do is build up like a contact list uh, from from the from the people submitting the forms. Um, so that might be something that that we can get when we're we're getting the W nines for everybody is is maybe just a contact list of maybe all the people that may or may not be filling out the form. Um, I'd, I'd hate to tell you guys that only one person at your organization can fill out the form because they're not always going to be there. Um, I know you mentioned a backup person, but um, as long as, as your firm is your organization is comfortable, um, we're comfortable uh, accepting the form um, just as a as an ease ease of getting these things submitted. Um, do you have a date that we will start this process? So yeah, May first. Um, is, is officially the date. Um, I can talk about our schedule. 
Um, so we typically do a weekly uh, payment run. Um, I'm not sure what your current schedule is, but um, we're going uh, any any requests received by Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Time uh, will be processed the following thir following Tuesday, and then our billing department is going to grab it the following day and and send the bill for that. Um, so. And then my, my billing department has assured me that the payment should go out the following Wednesday. And we should have that information back and, and we should have it out the door. So a week within processing, we should have payments out. Um, I'm not sure if there's situations, I'm sure there are other situations where maybe something has to go out sooner. Um, we can certainly talk about those one-off uh, occurrences you know, as they come up. Um, I don't see any of those documents. Yeah, um, I could certainly, I know I, I sent these to Linda and Laney and and uh, we could certainly make these available to everyone. Um, are you going to accept an older claim? Um, that's more of a, a Linda and Laney question. I believe uh, you had mentioned something about getting those uh, older ones through, um, but we can certainly talk Laney and, and uh, Linda about that if we need to. Um, we have been in situations where there's cleanup needed um, from a previous FMS. So if that's something that, that we all agree uh, is something that needs to be done, then we can, we can talk about that, certainly. Uh, if a local business has a website, can you do the order, i.e. community meals, furniture store? Yeah, yeah, as long as they have a website. Um, and even if they don't have a website, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's an individual furniture store that you like to use, it's a mom and pop stop. Um, if they're comfortable, we'll happily call them and, and facilitate the payment that way. Um, it's just a, a little bit more work on our end, but we understand that, you know, not every city or town has a, a Walmart or a, a huge furniture store. So um, whatever we can do to help facilitate, like I said, is is kind of our role. And uh, that's 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 how we view it. So um, we hope we hope to make this easier on you guys uh, is kind of our primary goal. Um, Will payments be coming through checks and will it be easy to identify which FTS the payment is for? So yes, we can, we're, we're set up to do checks and we can also do ACH. Um, and then I can, uh, I can send out the ACH form uh, if, if that's something that the AAAs would like to do or if there's someone um, that you're filling the form out for that would like to receive an ACH, they can, they can sign up for that too. Um, since your contract starts May 1st, does April billing need to go to Acumen? Um, so I think Linda mentioned at the start that April 29th was the, was the date. Linda, is that correct? It is correct. So if, if you can submit all of your FTS requests to Acumen by Thursday the 29th um, by midnight, um, that will meet their billing deadline. And then if you've got any claims that you would normally submit that Friday, the 30th, if you will just hold those and submit those um, to Morning Sun, um, either the first or, or the following Monday, whenever you're back in the office, that would be appreciated. Thank you, Linda. Um, so for clients moving out May 1st, to be able to access be able to access having you purchase for that move or not until after May. Um, Brenda, if you could kind of clarify that question. Um, uh, I guess if, so you can't hear me. All right, Brenda, if we have to, we have to answer that question uh, offline, we certainly can. Oh, there we go. I might be able to help her clarify. I believe she might be referring to new choice waiver, not um, transitional supplies. A lot of times they might get ordered before 
that May 1st date because they need it as they move in. Is that correct, Brenda? I believe that's what she's referring to. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So so online orders are going to be the same as, as checks and ACHs. Um, we've been directed to bill for that or bill for that amount before we actually send the check or place the order. Um, so we're going to follow that same process uh, for online orders. Um, so that's that's kind of my answer to that is we still have to to follow the the rules of the program. So um, I'm not sure if exceptions need to be made, um, Lainey and Lainey. We can talk about that if if that's a if that's a situation. Um, we can certainly talk about that. Yeah, sometimes that needs to be ordered before it's actually approved on a new choice waiver care plan. So I think that's the issue. Mm -hmm. Well, these are all great questions. Does anybody have, have a question and want to uh, jump in? I have a I have a question. On aging waiver claims, um, sometimes when I'm putting through a form through Acumen, I will have um, solid mills, insure mills, and a community mill card. And will I be able to submit the same service because they're all billed under the same code? but for different dates. So the different dates are fine. As long as it's for the same vendor or website um, on that form, uh, you can do multiple dates. So it'd be just like that, similar to the paper form, you just do a, a unit of three and then in the description, break that down. And just be sure to have a separate request for each provider. Correct. So your community card would be separate from your supplemental meals. Um, Correct. because most likely they would be different providers. Uh, we have a question for, for NCW with Community Transition Services. What's the process for submitting when check payment may need to go to two different companies like a moving company and a furniture company? Um, so again, that's a similar situation that, that Linda just brought up. So that's two different vendors, so that's two different forms. I know that's a little bit of a pain, um, but it's it's just to keep everything separate because uh, there might not be an issue with the with the furniture, but there might be an issue with the moving company um, or vice versa. So we want to keep that separate and keep the documentation separate. Um, the next question with online orders, will there be communication with either the CM or client about expected delivery date? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you would like to get a copy of, of the, uh, you know, delivery email or the shipment notification, just put that on the form in the description. Um, and we'll, we'll have a place in our system where we can mark that. So when we get that into our inbox, all, all of our uh, all of our order information is going to go to that same email that you guys that you guys will be contacting if you have questions. So all of that will go to there. Um, and then we can simply just forward that if that's if that's something that's needed, or if that's something you would like, um, just let us know. Uh, not not all the time. You know, everybody wants to, especially if there's multiple orders, all the emails. So if, if you do want to, to receive those, just let us know. And we're happy to send them over. Uh, Susie, let's go up to Susie's question about the ACH form. When using the ACH form, will there be something like a check stub that would delineate which client the payment is for? Um, so the, the ACH form, um, we do need a copy of a cancel check or a letter from the bank that that just details the the, the routing and the and the account number um, verifies it more likely. Um, as far as payment for the for the vendors, we wouldn't really necessarily need to tie it back to the client. Um, we would do that separate from from the ACH form. So. If we had two different clients that had, um, you know, an invoice for a vendor, we would keep that separate in our system. So um, you would need to differentiate which client the ACH form is for. Um, is there a way to track unpaid claims? Yes, there is. So we're we're going to have a claims and, and payment log um, that we submit to the state. 
every every month, um, and and we're also going to be updating that every week um, when we do a batch for payments, when our billing um, bills and then receives, and then also when we enter our check numbers and stuff. So we'll have an ongoing record of of what has been, um, you know, billed and or and the claim has come back, um, and and what hasn't. So we'll have a, a detailed record of that. Um, at all times, it's just going to be updated, and it's going to be in real time on on our side. So, if you have a question or if there's an issue, I'm sure our billing department will reach out, um, and then you know, obviously, we can we can talk about uh, further on that process if we need to. Are there any other questions? Um, here we go. When receiving a check payment, will specify which FTSs are being paid. Um, yeah, so you'll put whoever's whoever's receiving the check will be entered into that make check payable to field. Um, so they'll that that's who will get the check is who is made payable to. Um, Linda has a question. If you have the same participant each month, will their information be available, or do you have to input each time? Um, so what we do in, in other programs when we have a reoccurring expense, like a monthly expense, it's the same every month. Um, you'll just note that on the form. And as long as nothing changes with that order or vendor or anything, um, we'll, we'll keep that in our system and we'll issue that payment monthly. Um, you will have to enter the in information into the form every time. Um, each individual form is its own form. So once you click submit, nothing is saved. On your end, you'll get that copy of the form, but um, nothing on the website will save the information of the clients. I know this is a little bit of a change going from a, a paper form that you can, you know, just have pre-filled out at the top and then kind of fill out as you need to. Um, one of the benefits of, of the electronic form, um, if there's any updates, you guys will always have the most or be using the most updated version of the form because um, it'll always be available on our website. Um, that's one of the one of the benefits. Um, the other benefit, hopefully you'll find too, is that copy of the form that you get with all of the attachments all in one place. Um, hopefully that'll help your record keeping at least a little bit. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh, Tracy just mentioned that she is a maverick. She went to MSU Mankato. <laughs> uh, would we receive one payment per client or a bulk payment for all the claims built? Um, if it's if it's two, so it's it's by vendor. So if we have multiple um, expenses for one vendor, it'll be on one check, uh, but it'll be separate claims on the billing side. Um, so we'll just once we get that back, we'll condense that into one check and, and have a list of all the things that that check is is for. Um, that would kind of be a nightmare if we had to sell one check out. Um, for each 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 form each week, that would be uh, a lot. Um, all good questions. Um, does anybody have any other questions, comments, like Tracy? Yeah, so yes, we do process our claims. Um, as I mentioned, the schedule it's going to be every Wednesday. Our billing department is going to process claims. And then the following Wednesday, when we get those claims back, we're going to um, process or, or re enter those in again um, on our side. So that's when we'll get notified that the claim has gone through um, and then we can issue payment. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, I 
I mainly just do the billing and tracking of payments and our case managers um, enter the FTS information. So is there a way that I can get the emails that they get back for the, you know, like the confirmations and things like that so I, I can track things? Because sure. I'm, I'm getting that the person who puts the order in is the one that gets the email. Yeah, so what, what you can do is just talk to them and when they receive that email, <laughs> they can simply just forward it to you and then you can have a copy of it too. Well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Another comment, Little House on the Prairie fan. <laughs> um, what is the fee for the service? Will that be will that paid by the individual agencies? Um, Linda or Laney, do you want to answer that? Sure. So this is um, a state specific contract that we have with Morning Sun. So we pay them a contracted fee to provide this service. So there won't be any additional services that are charged to the AAAs or CMAs. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I know that question had come up from our billing department because we work with some of some of the organizations um, for payroll and that this is completely separate. And uh, like Linda said, we'll be uh, billing the state directly. Um, if we elect to have ACH, will we receive a list of claims paid either by email or mail? Yes, um, so we send out an ACH payment notification, um, just like a check stub, basically, um, with the information on what that payment is for. Um, we can certainly, if you'd like to have it emailed, um, we can have a we can have that uh, marked in our system and, and we can send you an email uh, version of that form. Um, like I said, you'll just have to let us know. Are we contracted for FMS services on these waivers? Um, I believe so. Um, that's uh, in all the work that we do in the state of Utah. We're we're an FMS vendor, um, so yeah, that that is that is a yes. Yes, Morning Sun is definitely a, a FMS vendor for aging. Um, I'm not positive about new choices. I'm not sure if Lainey's still on the call. I know I saw that she left. Maybe she's having some internet troubles. Um, but we can definitely look. But Aging Waiver, for sure, they are an FMS agency for us and should be on your provider um, choice forms. Right. Um, how do we contact her FMS and set up? Uh, Tracy, I'm not sure. Uh, the question that's being asked. So Tracy, I'm not sure if I understand your question either. Um, so they should be a provider on your provider form uh, that we allow the participants to choose. Um, the provider for the FMS services. Um, just wondering if you're asking how to get them set up or. Okay, I just took myself off mute. Uh, <laughs> so how do we, yeah, how do we get the information if we have clients that choose them? It seems like we've routed them all to another company thinking there was not another available company. Oh dear. Um, what I can do is I can have Carrie send out some screenshots from the PRISM record um, to all the AAAs um, because they should be with all the AAAs and should be on your provider list. Um, and that way you can add them. And if they if they choose Morning Sun, then you could just contact Morning Sun to let them know when they've been chosen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, so do we need to change all care plans, plans effective 5 1? Uh, 
Linda, do you want to answer that one? Yes. Um, that is a good question. Yes, we would need to um, add the new name um, for FTS. And um, I'm hoping that Lainey can respond for new choices because their care plans are a little different than aging. Um, their care plans are online versus aging is all paper. Um, Linda? If, is Lainey available? Yes. Linda, this is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. This is why I asked if the billing for April should go to Acumen and not Morning Sun because on the care plan, their their meals and stuff will be through acumen through april and then may starts the new contract with morning sun right so are, are you worried about maybe submitting not submitting your april claims until maybe the middle of may or something and um making sure there's a clean a clean trail between acumen and um morning sun files closing and stuff because if not there will be audit findings on everybody's clients at the end of next year when you start looking right right because we generally bill at the end of the month to acumen for everything that happened in april right so we would bill in may for april oh i see okay that's that's why i asked that question that i did Right. Um, we may need to have an internal conversation about that. And maybe if we can get back with you on that. Linda, can you hear me? This yeah. is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Yeah, the other Tammy. Um, the, FTS does, the FTS does not get listed on the care plans. Only FMS does. Oh. Because FTS is not really, it's not a waiver service. It's just something that's required as a process for the conflict-free case management. Right. So there's there's no reason for anyone to list any like Acumen or Morning Sun as the FTS provider because that's just a process. Okay, but like for the liquid meals um, on the care plan, um, currently um, we list the liquid meals, but do we not list a provider maybe for FTS? Okay, well, yeah, if, if, if the provider is going to be, I guess if the provider, well, it's still gonna be whoever they pick for the provider. If that's Abbott Laboratories, um, then that, or, or Amazon, you know, whoever they're getting that product from is is who that provider would be, even if, even if Morning Sun orders that for them it's okay. still they're ordering it from somewhere who the provider who the provider is whoever the provider is for that liquid meal or for you know whatever does that make sense okay yeah that would that's perfect so they don't currently list acumen on no on they their, shouldn't i mean okay. some people did and i corrected them and said no okay. that's it this doesn't get listed that way okay so now, if it's like fms that's different Right. That's the T2040, but the FTS has no Hicks Picks code. And um, just because they're ordering for the AAA, if the AAA is still getting it from their senior center, they're still going to list their senior center as a provider. Okay, so perfect. So then for aging waiver, um, if we're not listing Acumen, then you know we should be fine with our dates and, and our audits. Well, they so shouldn't be listing that. acumen anyway, except, right. like I said, with the FMS, the T2040 code. Right, right. And okay. I just want to make yeah. sure everybody's clear. Perfect. Yeah, so for aging waiver, we don't need to update the care plans then if acumen is not currently listed for your FTS services. Well, um, if acumen is listed for the FTS, they need to take it off of there because, okay. <laughs> because it shouldn't be on there. I Perfect. think some AAAs put it on initially thinking that's what they needed to do. And okay. I let them know that that's not how they should list things. So I think we're all on that page. All the AAAs are on that page at this point. Perfect. So if they're not, then make sure you don't put Acumen or Morning Sun on as an FTS, as the provider of whatever product you're ordering. 
Okay, perfect. Thanks, Tammy. I'm um, just looking through. Joseph said, uh, we can talk to the quality assurance team as well as our main concern is the amount, frequency, duration of the authorized service, it picks code. Um, I was starting to put the uh, contact information just in the chat. I did get the 1-800 number in there, but now I'm gonna um, go down here. How, is lo how long has Morning, uh, Morning Star been an option for FMS with PAS services? I had no idea there was anyone besides Acumen. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Um, I would direct, some of you may know SEAL. She's our, our program administrator. She's, she works out of, of, of Utah. If you've talked to SEAL in the past, um, she would be the contact for, for the, uh, any of the, the personal care attended uh, payroll services uh, information. And actually, you can just dial her 1-800 number. She's option one. Um, SEAL's great. If you haven't talked to her previously, um, FTS expenses, you'll, you, you can call SEAL. Um, we're trying to keep her uh, out of it, not in a bad way, but she's, she already has enough going on. Um, that's why our AP team or my team will, t will take those calls uh, regarding to these requests. And again, we're option five at the 1-800 number. Um, and Morning Sun is, is fairly new for FMS for aging. Um, we did just have Acumen for a very, very long time, but mm -hmm. I think it's been within the last year or sometime that, that they were approved. But we'll get that up. We'll have Carrie get that out all, to all the AAAs. So okay. if they're not currently on the list, we can add them. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions, comments? So sorry, just to confirm, um, the plans that I do have listed Acumen on as the provider will switch that over May 1st to Morning Sun. So Haley, are you a new choice? Waiver provider? Yes. CMA? Okay. Yes, I'm with New Choice. So on our care plans, like I have listed for, like, say, UTA bus passes for transportation. Um, we do the FPS payment through Acumen for that. So we'll just switch that over to Morning Sun effect, like switch the care plan. Is that what you're um, I'm Haley. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Linda, this is Amelia um, with New Choices Waiver. Haley, I'll chat with um, Lainey about how she wants us to handle that, and we'll send out an email communication to all the CMAs. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so I was asked, uh, may I have my email address? Um, so my response was, uh, I'll be monitoring the, the, the MS-UT expenses inbox. Um, I, I know Linda and, and uh, Lainey do have my email address, and I'm, I'm happy to give it out. But if we're having discussions about the FTS program specifically, we'd like to go. We'd like those to go to that inbox. Um, I'll be uh, I'll be monitoring this this inbox, you know, until I transition it to my team. So I will be the one responding to them. Uh, until that transition. So uh, you'll definitely, uh, if you send an email, I'll definitely get back to you. And one of our one of our main goals as far as customer service goes, just to let you guys know, um, we look to get responses back, you know, whether it's a voicemail or an email within 24 hours. Um, obviously the weekend, we can't, we can't promise, but um, during the week and weekdays, we definitely want to get back to you with a response. And if we don't have an answer, we're, we're going to let you know that we're still trying to get an answer. Um, within 24 hours, just to, just to keep you updated in case you, you're wondering if we got the email or, or, or those types of things. You guys have asked great questions. Uh, any, any others? Well, thank you, Brian. That was very informative and we're very excited um, for your FTS process.
and the possibility that you can order on behalf of the AAAs and CMAs now as a new feature, that's exciting. Um, well, if we don't have any other questions, I just wanna thank everyone for, for attending the, the training. And if you have any questions, please reach out to myself or Lainey. Um, if it's a new related to the, like the new choice waiver form or a process, if you can reach out to Lainey Davis, if it's related to aging, if you'll reach out to me, uh, I'm Linda Robinson. And thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.